we're back, we're live. I'm Jay Fidel here on Community Matters, and our guest today is Pepe Nieva. Uh, she is the daughter of Antonio Nieva, and uh, she what, edited a book called uh, After Pearl Harbor, Remembering World War II. She's a PR person, and she <clears throat> knows how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for well, having me, Jay. Welcome to the show, Pepe. So <clears throat> tell, us, uh, tell us about this book. Tell us about your father's uh, story. Okay, so last um, week we did the book launch for my father's book, which is called Cadet, Soldier, Guerrilla Fighter. Yeah, there it is. And another book also on the World War II in the Philippines called The Battle of Ising. So um, these two books really tell some uh, very rare first-hand accounts of the World War II in the Philippines because right after Pearl Harbor was attacked, you know, a few hours, Japanese bombers uh, decimated Clark Field north of Manila, Cavite also, and Mindanao in the Philippines. And um, after that, because we were in American territory, uh, the Japanese wanted the Philippines like they wanted the rest of Southeast Asia. Sure, part of their plan. Yeah. That's why they attacked Pearl Harbor to get right. clearance to do that. Yes, because they wanted the resources of Southeast Asia. Yeah. And then they had something called the um, Great East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. And their rationale for that, for the Asian countries, was that they wanted the Western col colonial powers to be out of there. So they're telling the countries, oh, side with us and um, we'll get rid of the Brits, the French, yeah. and the U.S. But that's not what happened. Uh, well, then it would be, they would be the ones who would be the colonial power. <laughs> <laughs> we replace one colonial yes. power with another <laughs> <Yes>. one. <laughs> right. Yeah. So these two books... Um, are available now. My father's book, Cadet Soldier, Guerrilla Fighter, is available at Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. And Marie's book, which is only available in the Philippines, is going to come over here uh, at Calamansi Books. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, this is, this is really important on a number of levels. Uh, one is, um, you know, on December 7th, we're celebrating the beginning of the war mm -hmm. and uh, an, an event that led immediately to what happened in the Philippines. And uh, on the other hand, there was an article in the paper yesterday about recognition of Filipino soldiers who were in the U.S. Army. Can you talk about that? Yeah. About 250,000 um, Filipino soldiers fought with the Americans during World War II. Um, they were either part of the United States Armed Forces of the Far East or the Philippine Commonwealth Army, or they were guerrillas who fought after Bataan fell and um, people went to the hills and um, yes. fought. So. They've been fighting a long battle for recognition uh, so that they will get the benefits of um, veterans here in the U.S. Yeah, and they got something yeah. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yesterday it was a, one of the big victories. I think that they were able to get Congress to sign um, a bill that would give them a Congressional Medal of Honor. And it's, going, I think, going to the president for a signature. Yeah. Now, um, before that, the stimulus package, Senator Dan Inouye was able to sneak in a reparations uh, package for veterans, about ten or 15,000 for veterans. But, yeah. you know, there's only like a few thousand of them left, of course. Yeah, sure. So if you have to be alive to get this. Sure. And, really, and there was one guy, with respect to the one that was just announced yesterday, mm -hmm. there was one guy that said, uh, gee, uh, I hope I'm alive by the time I get yeah. the <laughs> you know, But maybe the medal, I don't know how they're going to give yeah. it. Because they gave yeah. it, I think, to the 442nd. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. I don't think they give post post oh. posthumous. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. So they, they didn't get the money if you're dead. So uh, can you tell the story about how, how the Filipino soldiers were involved? I mean, I think people don't really understand. They think that the Philippines is a separate country, but mm -hmm. at the time it was not a separate country. Mm -hmm. And when they, you know, got involved in the army at the time of the war, they were working for, fighting for the American army yes. because the Philippines was a territory yes. of the United States. Yes. So, um, when the when Pearl Harbor was bombed and America declared war the day after, I think, um, they start. Before that, they were already recruiting um, Filipino soldiers to join the what called USAFE, which is United States Armed Forces of the Far East, as well as the Philippine Commonwealth Army. My father was one of those being recruited. He was a ROTC cadet. Is maybe that right? Old, in college? Yeah, 20 oh, years old. Oh, and, oh, oh. But in the book, he says, it, 
at first it was all hooray, no more books, no more teachers, stuff like that. But the, then he said it's also goodbye to good times where, you know, they could no longer go make the paseo down the boulevard, you yeah. know, and they, they would say goodbye to their girlfriends oh, and stuff yeah. like that. So the book actually is um, part memoir, part history. So he writes in third person, but it, it, it's, it's his story. Like he went to say goodbye to his godfather who gave him his pistol that he used during the Spanish-American War. Oh. And then he said goodbye to his girlfriend oh. with a chaperone in the back. Oh, you know? yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, then he had the last dance, you know, oh. in the Philippines, at that, in Manila especially, in the society there. It was very beautiful at that time, you yes. know, before yes. the war and people had dances. And anyway, so then, then he went off and he was shipped off to Bataan where MacArthur had designated Bataan as the last um, fight, a place to fight uh, until they would get reinforcements. Yeah. But they never got the reinforcements because the U.S. decided to focus on Europe instead of the Pacific oh, first. What a so that so was, there actually. they were waiting and waiting and they had World War I weapons and they had hardly any... Um, food and stuff like that. But yeah. um, as, as they said, uh, the Filipinos and the Americans were able to stave off the Japanese for three and a half months, while the rest of Southeast Asia just fell like a um, deck of cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was a huge defeat when the Japanese finally overpowered them, mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. Um, Bataan was the largest defeat of the U.S. military in history. And you know, the last cavalry charge was also in Bataan. I read that, you know, yeah. It, um, yeah, so. So you had 75,000 people mm -hmm. surrendered, right. both Filipinos and U.S. Yes, soldiers, right. American soldiers, mm -hmm. surrendered on that day mm -hmm. in Bataan. Mm -hmm. And they were taken prisoner by the Japanese. Right, and after that, they went on the death march, you know. Um, they had to walk like four provinces to the north. And a lot of them died, and, be, and you know, um, the Japanese have a different mindset than uh, Western people in that if you're a prisoner of war, you might as well be dead, you know. So while the U.S. people, if you're going to be prisoner, then you're going to live you're going to fight to live again or live to fight again or yeah, something. Yeah, but yeah. the Japanese, you know, it's Bushido. If you're defeated, you're going to kill yourself or something, right? Yeah, so right. They, Loss of face, whatever. Yeah, yeah, so they didn't really treat them well because they're just prisoners. Yeah. So a lot of them died yeah. along the way. And the remarkable thing was your father was captured among the 75,000. Mm -hmm. Your father was on the death march. Mm -hmm. And your father survived to live another day and yes. to have you. Yes. <laughs> right. well, this has huge historical context. Yeah. yeah. So um, next year, in April, is the 75th anniversary as well of the fall of Bataan. Yeah. So it took three and a half years until General MacArthur would fulfill his promise to return. And he said, I shall return. That's where he said it, yeah, when, yeah. at the fall of Bataan. Well, yeah. yeah, actually, he said it in, in Australia because. After um, Bataan fell, there was still Corregidor, right? He was holed up in Corregidor, and that was the headquarters. And then him and the president of the Philippines at that time, the Commonwealth, um, escaped by submarine to Australia. And that's where he said, I will return. And he did. Yeah. But These are huge events. Yeah. yeah it took him a few years, though, to get yeah, back. Three and a half years. So yeah. in the meantime, there was Japanese, the Philippines was occupied by Japan, and they made everybody learn Japanese. And all the street names in Manila were changed to Japanese. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's part of the book as well. Uh, some of it is funny because... You know, Filipinos, they like to have party and fun regardless, right? So they had Less them all. <laughs> everybody's parties where everybody could come. And then they had floating casinos because it would float from place to place. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, you know, and then everybody was buying and selling and buying and selling just yeah. to survive. It's like a great story. I mean, it, it's a uh, lot of ground. great stories. Yeah. So, you know, uh, when we had the book launch, I realized that there's a lot of great stories out there and that um, if we had uh, some venues to, to talk about them, it would be really yeah. great. Well, yeah. let's, let's spend some time, you and me, and uh, 
Uh, we will also talk to uh, Jojo Abinales so yes. we can get hold of him again yeah. and uh, talk about all the implications here. But I would like to, do we have any footage on this? I think we have some footage. We have some um, we pictures have some of, yeah, because aside from writing the book, my father was an artist. Yeah. And he um, drew a lot of his experiences. Oh, For example, yes. here, this is the Battle of Bataan. So oh, she was. He had, so what I did was I dug up all this um, it, some of his articles had been published in magazines and then there was a little book that was published but this is the larger version mm -hmm. of the book and um, so he would draw all of this while we were growing up because he wrote this book in a, over a long long period of time yeah. and um, so it was published a long time ago in a very small version so I figured it doesn't do it justice because of especially the drawings and stuff so that's when I decided to published a book through createspace.com. So CreateSpace is great, but... Um, create but is part of Amazon? Yeah, so you, you do the book, you upload a PDF of the book, and then you put, set your pricing, and then you set, um, you say you want to sell it all over the world, like UK, Amazon, and stuff like designate that. Designate your market. Yeah, designate. And then it's up to you to promote it. So, um, so here we are. So here we are, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so um, it was a learning curve because what I learned was you have to um, have it perfect the first time because I kept uploading it online. Because, of course, when you do a book, you always see things you want to change, and right, stuff, right, you know. Right, right. So, get it as perfect as possible before you um, upload it. But then again, like this version came out pink rather than red, you know, the banner, so I reordered it. But the good thing is um, when you when you do it this way, you don't pay a, 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 a publishing printer. House. Yeah, or a, a printer. Yeah. yeah, so I I checked it out in Manila for the original part, uh, and they would have cost me two to three thousand dollars just to print the book. But this one, it doesn't cost you anything but your your sweat your equity, and, sweat. and then you just order it on demand. Okay, I, we're going to take a short break, mm -hmm. Effie, and when we come back, I want to talk about your experience in gathering the data mm -hmm. and putting it all together, not only, you know, for purposes of understanding this book and its, its value, not only to you, but to us, but also the process yes, of putting a book together. Yes, that might be interesting for your yeah. techie people. We'll yeah. be right back. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Hawaii, Asia in Review. I am Johnson Choi, the host. I'm looking forward to see you next month, December 15, Thursday, 11 o'clock right here again. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Hi, I'm Stan the Energy Man, and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon. ThinkTechHawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Law Across the Sea. Please join me every other Monday to hear lawyers from Hawaii discussing ways to reach across the sea and help people and bring people together. Aloha. We're back. We're live with uh, Pepe Nieva. And uh, she helped put a book together. She did put a book together about her father. Uh, and his name was Antonio Nieva. And he was in the Bataan Death March and a Filipino soldier in the, uh, in the Second World War. But there's a, the companion book, a uh, companion project. Can you talk about it? Yeah, so um, this book, I gathered all the materials over a period of a couple of years because some of it was written in magazines and some of it was written in an original book. And then there were his illustrations were all over the place. There were some in the house in Manila. There were some in my sister's house in Washington, D.C. So we digitized, we OCR uh, the manuscript, and then we had to clean it up. We're here with uh, Pepe Nieva talking about the companion book uh, that goes with the one we were talking about, namely After Pearl Harbor Remembering World War II by her, about her father. Now, what about the companion? Right, so during our launch last week, uh, we also had another book called The Battle of Ising, 
by Marie Vallejo, and she used to live here as well. But this is about her father, who was a guerrilla commander in the southern island of Mindanao. He, he's, um, he won a lot of battles that helped MacArthur return to the Philippines. Um, the interesting thing about Marie's book is that while she was uh, researching it, she interviewed 20 veterans who had been in that battle because her father is also dead. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so while researching, she found all these records of uh, World War II in the Philippines and the guerrillas in the Philippines at the U.S. National Archives in Maryland. So she raised some money to uh, digitalize all um, these this, uh, records that are all crumbling because some of them were buried in the jungle and they're all falling apart, wow. you know, and they're all moist. Nobody's really paying attention to them because there's a lot of other work that the archives is doing. Okay. So she raised the money. She, she and her team of four uh, stayed in Washington, D.C. for four months to digitalize all these pieces of paper. And they had to uh, follow the... Um, protocol of the archives as well. So it's um, categorized like what the archives does. So now it's all available at this um, Philippine Veterans Association website, pvao.com. Pvao.com. And anybody can research it. It's a little bit difficult to research, but... Um, what, what is it? What do you see when you look at a record? Um, if you go to PVA o.com military history or something you will see um, all the folders actually that they digitalize and then in each folder it has uh, about this guerrilla unit in this certain area it has a name she herself does not know what is in there she says there's tons and tons of materials that people can use to make tons and tons of books because they were just scanning and scanning and scanning and they didn't have time to read everything. But for example, she says in file 61, there's a whole file on President Ferdinand Marcos and because um, he was also a guerrilla. Yeah. And then it has uh, his Maharlika group and then he was trying to get recognition from them from the U.S., but he didn't get it. But anyway, stuff like that. And then if you go to a certain province, for example, it will list the guerrilla units that are there. And what's important with this is that, um, you know, for those people who are trying to get benefits, a lot of them have been denied because they didn't have the records. Maybe they were These down. records would help them. Yeah, and these records would help them. Yeah. So she's trying to get into all the libraries so that people can it's get it. Definitely for, worth for studying, free. worth having yeah. that data. So that's a very, very that's important project. project. Yeah. yeah. So Marie was here, but she 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 left already for yeah. Manila. Yeah. So uh, going back to your your book, um, I'd like to just discuss how how you uh, uh, approach that, how you put it together. You decided you wanted to cover your father's story. Mm -hmm. um, you had some material from him. Right. Um, and he was alive when you started writing, or he had already died? Um, he, he Actually, it's his work. It's his writing that he's been writing over a period of years. So, yeah. like I said, there was a little book uh, that was had well, a different title. A, a smaller yeah, book, smaller way back version. Yeah. And then there were some magazine articles. And so what I did was I edited them all together and I chop I chop the chapters up into smaller chapters because people don't have attention span to read long <laughs> things, right? So, so in front of every chapter I put uh, an illustration of either his drawings or some historical pictures that I dug up that are, you know, don't have ca um, yeah. copyright <laughs> and all that. <laughs> so then I laid it all out and then I up, I found this createspace.com now. If you don't know how to lay out, you can um, hire some of their artists and stuff, and it costs like two to three grand or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then you upload it, and then it appears in Amazon.com, and then you have a Kindle version, which is a Word program. Sure. But this, for the create space, you have to do PDF. But for the Kindle, you have to do Word. And the problem with Word, it doesn't... Um, keep the formatting right mm -hmm. so things go like this and so I had to redo it or anyway it was very uh, tedious <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah but but uh, at the end of the day it's, it's a you, you're uploading a what a PDF yes and at the create space mm -hmm. yeah. and then for Kindle you're uploading a word yes. document and you have to do two yes. separate editions yes then. and yeah. then um, yeah you have to upload it in two different files although at create space you can just say 
I want to publish in Kindle and they'll do it for you. But oh, it's a or price. But, yeah. yeah. So it's a very inexpensive way to publish a book. So this is very nice, actually. Yeah. Looks like it's very well laid out. It's Thank professional. Thank you. Yes, it and has a, to be. It's That's readable. my job. You know the way the, the <laughs> font works. That's your job yeah. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I used to do desktop for oh. corporations like HECO and, you know, oh. and uh, the part of the education. So you were a natural for this. <laughs> well, I know how to do it, but it's I'm not an artist, you know. <laughs> so it could be better, but hey. You had to rewrite the copy, didn't you? Not you said, you, much. Said you made it into third person instead of No, it's person. always third. He wrote it this way. But he wrote it third yeah, person. Yeah, so what I did was I moved things around and I chopped things a lot. I mean, I chopped it into chapters, small small readable yeah. chapters yeah. you know it's trying to follow how da vinci code does so you can <laughs> have this last <laughs> sentence and you can turn the page and so you'll turn the going, page yeah. right <laughs> right so i tried that but so my friends say that it's uh it's fast readable. read yeah, fast okay. read yeah so what it is it has his like third person accounts of his personal and then it also has history of like corredor what happened there and then there's also a section on the guerrillas, because after he um, was released from Bataan, see, they released the Filipino soldiers, but they kept the Americans into POW camps. So when he was released, uh, he was doing a buy and sell business in Manila, and then the Japanese, I think, confiscated the buy and sell business. So he got upset and he joined the guerrillas. <laughs> oh, so he got out of the out of the yeah. prison. Yeah. He had right. been activated, <laughs> right? Because those were his friends, you know, our other ROTC people, and it was uh, the the group was called Hunters ROTC, yeah. and his nom de guerre was Captain Lancer. Oh, that's <laughs> so. Then he was he was in the bush then doing guerrilla. Yes. Yeah, so um, they, I think, he participated in the raid of um, prison camp to free uh, like courageous men 500 courageous yeah men. according to my relatives in the province where i went to they said wow this he used to go there with his other cousins who were also guerrillas in the province they said, wow they were all brave they had swords they had guns <laughs> and he was a kid at that time <laughs> so yeah so it's a great story it, it, there's a lot of stories out there you know so it would be really nice if more people could hear yeah, about yeah, it yeah yeah oh. yeah well, I, you know, I, uh, I, I wonder uh, just exactly how it was to be in his skin at the time this happened. It yeah. Sounds like this book takes you there. It does. And it makes you understand how it was day to day. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, lucky my father is kind of a renaissance man. He's a really good writer and, of course, he's also an artist. But he was a lawyer, uh, you know, because in those days... You don't become an architect or an artist. You become a doctor or a lawyer or something <laughs> like that. So, Still so. today. <laughs> Too many, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, I'm, I hope uh, people check it out. It's called Cadet Soldier Guerrilla Fighter okay. on Amazon.com. Okay. Yeah. And, you, and uh, also on Kindle. So, you can bring yes, it right down to right, Kindle as an electronic right, right. version. So, the Kindle I, version that. is cheaper than the print version, yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Okay, you heard it. Now you have to go out and check it out yes, at Amazon and out. Kindle. Take mm -hmm. a look at it. Easy read. And it's a story that you won't really find anywhere else. That's right. And it's right down on the ground with the people who were involved in some of the most uh, interesting and mm -hmm. in, in many ways tragic historic events of the time, mm -hmm. especially now around the, the, the celebration of mm -hmm. um, or the commemoration of Pearl Harbor. Right. Thank you so much, Peppy. Thank you, Jay. Yeah. Aloha. Aloha.